<sighs> All right, let's just be real here. Level with me for a moment. It's become a relative theme on my channel at this point. Rather, it's to grade, judge, rate, even critique movies or TV shows, all with the expertise of a five-year-old handling your 401k or the grace of me trying to do a kickflip at two in the morning to impress some ladies after four shots of Casamigos. All right, wait, actually, that got a little too real there. Point is, I critique with fairness and an open mind. Imagine the Harvey Dent of YouTube. We live in a black and white time when not everything is black and white. Not every movie or TV show is as bad as maybe as the first impressions might have implied. But in that same breath, I don't have to tell you how many shitters we've had just in this past year alone. And while there are many contributing factors as to why films don't work out in terms of audience retention or budget at the box office, like say having a poorly executed story with spotty dialogue and world building choices that lead to brainless and contrived character moments that have to happen in order for the nonsensical story to play out. Or studio executives with the intelligence of a goldfish race swapping a fictional character with the moral excuse that race doesn't matter, when in fact, if race doesn't matter, why bother changing it in the first place? Or a studio on its last dying breath releasing a sorry sack of shit pieces to the wild to get the torture and humiliation out of the way to hopefully leave the past behind and be reborn anew. Yeah, okay. But then you have films like Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, a film that proves that there are still new lows to be achieved in the desolate wasteland that is known as Hollywood creativity. Involving a studio that's so disrespectful and tone deaf to its own legacy character that they just can't help themselves from character assassination. They said it in the trailer for Obi-Wan, and at this point it's a running meme on this channel, it's like an itch for Lucasfilm. It is like an itch. They need help or rehab. They're addicted to character assassination. Sitting through this yet again, just another almost three hour fanfic of Kathleen Kennedy was one of the most dragging, boring, depressing, time wasting, and frustrating experiences that I've had in the cinema not only this year, not even in the last five years or in the past decade, but truly in the history of my life. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny was not only a movie that just simply shouldn't exist in the first place, but is a movie that encapsulates and showcases on the front lines how embarrassing and shameless a studio can become when pushed to the brink of financial downfall by their own fuck-ups. A film that not only finds its way to take yet another big old turd on one of the most legacy franchises of all time, but to also take a bona fide Hollywood legend like Harrison Ford in his betrayal of Indiana Jones as a character with all of the charm, charisma, relatability, craft, courage, and stoicism that made the character who he is, just to now make him a sad, lonely, terrified, out of touch, out of depth, and tortured corpse of a man is not what I want to see in my Indiana Jones film. Lucasfilm and Disney were deep in the trash bin on this one, my dear viewers, so deep, in fact, that Indiana Jones and the Dial of Dog Shit is more than likely to become the biggest box office flop of all time. But while the answer is relatively obvious to how the fuck we got here, we might as well talk about what this movie is even about, huh? The story actually kicks off like any other credibly made Indiana Jones film. So, the first three with Indy working behind enemy lines in World War II to recover an artifact known as the Spear of Destiny before it falls in the hands of the Nazis. Fucking Nazis. But with the artifact turning out to be a fake in this case, what's not fake is another artifact known as the Dial of Destiny. Yes, there you go. It's the movie title. You got it. Man, Disney's Lucasfilm really know how to name their films with the best of them, huh? A plus, Kathleen. Anyway, fast forward to the present day and feast your eyes on the new indie, the modern day indie, so to say. Say hello to the broken, depressed, divorced, and retired old man who can't even seem to wipe his own ass at night, let alone go on a classic indie adventure. A plus, Kathleen. I would like a double shot of that character assassination. And by all means, my dear viewer, take that sarcasm with a grain of salt, for we have a new addition. To this legacy franchise with a thunderous applause i would like you all to welcome in helena 
a young lass that I'm sure you guys all just expect me to rip into with the predictability of a YouTuber piranha feeding frenzy in a Little Mermaid Lagoon. But I'm not. As much as I would like to say that she's so blatantly a self-insert character of Kathleen Kennedy, again, and for the first act of this movie, she was. Helena was at least a character that, as the movie dragged along, was at least able to grow on me to a point that she wasn't as insufferable or poorly and predictably written as the trailers might have suggested. And honestly, we have bigger fish to fry when it comes to this film. Trust me. So with Helena managing to outmaneuver the ghost in this movie known as Indiana Jones and retrieve the dial of dog shit in order to auction it off to who knows who, for them to do whatever knows what, in order to gain a whatever amount of profit in order to pay off some debts. And yes, I know that all sounds incredibly stupid, but unlucky for her, Nazi guy whose name I'm not going to be able to pronounce from the flashback, so for the sake of this video going forward, we're going to call him Time Nazi, and his number one in command henchman I'll be referring to as Gun Guy has different plans. Now you see, my dear viewer, over-the-top McMuffins have become sort of a staple for the Indiana Jones franchise as a whole at this point. Gods that melt off your skin if you look at them, ancient colds that will rip out the still beating hearts of its sacrificial victims, imaginary bridges that only manifest if you truly believe. As I said, a staple of the franchise. So when it comes to Indiana Jones and the Dial of Dog Shit, Time Nazi is after an artifact that, as the name suggests, can change time itself to where the Nazis win the war. Or not let Hitler lose. I don't really know. Anyway, throw a car chase scene in there that goes on for about 10 minutes too long, a horse chase that was laughably bad, a boat scene that was actually pretty good with B.B. Waller actually adding some charm to her character, much to the annoyance of Kathleen, I'm sure. A couple contrivances that will make you want to cut your own brain out and remove the memory storage yourself. Like when Time Nazi just watches Indy and the crew through a pair of binoculars, and for no apparent reason other than no way to ride around this dog shit in a plastic bag pretending to be a plot, weren't heading in the direction that the dial told them to go, and decides to follow them and magically show up from scene to scene like he's an America's Got Talent, and I'm still finishing half of that bottle that I mentioned before of Casamigos. But unfortunately, I'm getting off track, so we need to finish this shit show. To wrap it all up, Time Nazi ends up with the two halves of the dial and plans to go back to 1939 to change the course of the war. But with the math not adding up, it takes Time Nazi and the Indy Gang back 2,000 years to the time of Archimedes, the inventor of the dial itself. Needless to say, there's another big CGI battle, Gun Guy and Time Nazi die in a plane crash, Helena and Indy survive, and we end the movie with Indy saying what is more than likely one of the dumbest movie ideas in the history of all movies, and begs Helena to let him stay in the past and die there. Helena is like, fuck off, and knocks Indy out and brings him back to the present, like she should. Indy and Marion reunite, they kiss, the credits roll, the lights turn on, and all I hear is silence in my theaters. Trust me, there was no cans round of applause for this dog shit. <sighs> This movie was really, really bad. But to get what is more than likely the elephant in the room out of the way, I don't think Helena was made to take over the role of Indiana Jones. And while it could just be a classic Crystal Skull situation, where that was probably the case, or at least the idea going forward, but then it flopped, Helena as a standalone character herself at least had an arc to her and a backstory that supported that growth. I know that they were going for a somewhat parallel story to Indy's journey from The Last Crusade, but unfortunately with two previous movies to build Indy's character and lay the groundwork of foreshadowing in his childhood, the emotional payoff in this movie simply just wasn't the same. The pacing is absolutely atrocious here, having most action sequences drag out far too long, and character moments just abruptly ending out of nowhere like there was a setup or payoff that I just happened to miss. Characters using instant transmission to wherever the story needs them to be with no sense of time or direction, which is pretty ironic for the source material that this movie is dealing with. Maybe Lucasfilm should create their own dial known as the Dial of Dipshits. The action scenes are truly hard to even watch. Seriously, 
Was the lighting team from the House of the Dragon hired for the flashback sequence? It's slow, and the editing is almost just as bad and nonsensical as the Fast and Furious movies trying to hide all of the drastic reshoots that this movie suffered from. Time Nazi and number one henchman Gun Guy are incompetently stupid, only able to achieve anything in regards to the plot, basically off sheer coincidence and instant transmission. Time Nazi specifically is the real problem here, never coming across as a threat to be dealt with, and the fact that he and Indy barely remember each other from the first initial flashback makes the whole ordeal seem so pointless and forgettable. When it comes to the ghost of Indiana Jones, this is just pure frustration from a fan's point of view at its highest peak. At this point, as mentioned before, Lucasfilm can't seem to get out of their own way when it comes to the character assassination of their own legacy characters, which begs the question, who is this even made for? Who is the target audience for something like this? It can't be original fans of the franchise or character because that originality that helped those films become the classics that they are now are nowhere to be found. And it's not to pass the dying embers from a torch struggling to stay lit, and obviously it's definitely not to make a profit, so why does this movie even exist in the first place? Indiana Jones and the Dial of Dogshit was easily one of the worst movies I've seen all year, and might damn near be one of the most tasteless, boring, disrespectful, time-wasting, embarrassing, shameful, depressing, money-hungry, and frustrating movies to ever be released on the big screen. And while internet culture and hating in general is at an all-time high nowadays, I can't be any more clear when I tell you not to give this movie your money. If you made it this far, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'm pretty sure this is the first of three videos dedicated to this movie alone. Truly an all-time shit stain that's edged in my memory bank forever. Comment down below how you felt about Indiana Jones and the Dial of Tom Foolery, and if you enjoyed, please, please tell me how. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching and check out some of my most recent videos because that's how the YouTube algorithm works. But with that, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.